Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and the very first video on cardiovascular physiology. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and spread the word. Uh, so let's dig in and start with the physiology. To understand the physiology behind pumping up blood by the heart, we first need to review the Frank Stalling mechanism, uh, which is one of the basic principles behind muscle contraction in our case. The cardiac muscle. Uh, it says the more you stretch the cardiac muscle, the more forcefully it will recoil back. Uh, we assume here that everything is normal, that is, uh, we have a normal heart. So, what does it really mean? Uh, why does it happen? How does it happen? Uh, we all know muscles contract by interaction of actin and myosin. Uh, let's say we have a cardiac muscle at rest. And we look at it microscopically. Uh, we will see the actin and myosin overlap but the muscle is not contracting because it's at rest. Uh, we will call it the resting actin myosin overlap. Uh, let's put some load onto our muscle shown here by the kilogram sign uh, but we all know in real life it's the weight of the blood that stretches the cardiac muscle. Uh, we go to the microscope again and find out that actin and myosin are now further apart but still overlapping. This position is the optimal actin myosin overlap and once achieved the muscle will contract back forcefully. We don't need to know uh, what's the optimal actin myosin overlap position, it's just for reference here to make sense out of it. So think of it as action and reaction of Newton's third law. Uh, the more forceful an action is, the more forceful a reaction to that action is. Or we can think of it as a slingshot. The more you pull it back, the further will your pellet go, provided you don't break the slingshot. Remember, you can also break the hurt by putting too much load on to it, uh, which will result in heart failure. So why do we need to know all this? Uh, it helps us in understanding how the cardiovascular system works and how do we develop diseases if something goes wrong. Uh, let's look at a single chambered heart for simplicity. Uh, it applies to the normal four chambered heart as well. Uh, we have a vein uh, going into the heart and an artery coming out of the heart. Remember the vein brings blood back to the heart and we call it the venous return, just a fancy term. It's the blood coming back to the heart. Uh, the heart is filled with blood and it stretches the muscle outwards. The fancy name of this outward stretch is preload. The heart is filled when it is relaxing, which is also called diastole. So the amount of blood inside the heart at the end of relaxation is called the end diastolic volume. This is normal. Let's say we somehow increase the venous return. It will result in an increased end diastolic volume which will stretch the heart out more. As a reaction, the cardiac muscle will recoil back or contract with more force as per stalling forces and we will have more blood coming out of the heart. Once the heart has stopped contracting, there will be a little blood left behind, which is called the end systolic volume. How do we increase the venous return? They can ask questions about these. So, veins have alpha-1 receptors. Uh, let's say the body needs more blood. Uh, it will activate the sympathetic autonomic nervous system, which stimulates alpha-1 receptors. Once activated, the alpha-1 receptors cause constriction of the veins and blood inside the veins is squeezed back into the heart, giving us increased venous return, increased end diastolic volume and increased preload, which results in more blood pumped out of the heart as we discussed previously. This can go wrong in anaphylactic shock in which veins fail to constrict or squeeze. So this is the clinical correlate. How do we increase venous return? 
by increasing the alpha-1 stimulation. How do we fail to achieve increase in venous return? What is the disease called? Anaphylactic shock. The arteries also have alpha-1 receptors and when activated, the arteries uh, behave a little differently. Okay, so uh, when the veins, uh, their alpha-1 receptors are con uh, activated, the veins constrict, more blood comes back to the heart and as a result, the heart pumps out more blood. But in case of arteries, when the alpha-1 receptors are activated, the arteries also constrict. But in that case, the constricted arteries, uh, they result in increased resistance to blood flow inside the arteries. Fancy name of that thing is the afterload. So increasing the afterload means more work for the heart to pump out blood which could be a bad thing as we see in hypertension. We will discuss these things in a lot more detail in the coming videos, but for now these are some basic concepts we need to understand and we will use these to discuss more advanced concepts in the upcoming videos. So see you in the next video.